Most of us are familiar with Kamala Harris, the senator and presidential candidate. But you may be surprised to find out that like many of us, she started out as a child. She's a daughter of immigrants, a father from Jamaica and a mother from Southern India, both active in the civil rights era. Harris was part of the second class to integrate Berkeley, California public schools. She did her undergrad at Howard, which makes her the first historically black colleges and universities grad on a major ticket. Harris is passionate about cooking. In fact, people in the LA area may have heard Harris calling into cooking shows. My entire childhood was pretty much spent in the kitchen. As this roasts, this is all gonna just get fragrant. Bring it around the legs. Tie that little bad boy up. <laughs> There's our That's chicken. <laughs> yes, the daughter of immigrants, an HBCU graduate, and on top of it all, a pretty damn good cook. Which means if she wins, that's gonna be a really big change for the kitchen at the VP residence. I mean, Kamala will be in there making delicious Jamaican and Indian food. Meanwhile, Mike Pence doesn't even have a spice cabinet because as he puts it, spice is the anal sex of flavor. And just by the way, isn't it funny that every election, the Democrats are putting together the most diverse tickets that they can? Like, what about a black man who's half Kenyan? Or, or how about a woman who's black and Indian? Meanwhile, the Republicans are over here like, okay, look, I know we've got a white guy on the ticket, but what if we could find a guy who's even whiter? Pack your bags, Billy. We're going to Indiana. So after graduating from Howard University, Harris returned to California to get her law degree. Throughout the 1990s, she built a solid career as a prosecutor. And then in 2003, she made her move into the public eye. 38-year-old Kamala Harris came out of nowhere, and as she did, she made history. She is the first woman ever to be in San Francisco's district attorney, and she is the first African-American woman in such a job ever in the state of California. Kamala Harris has received praise for creating innovative programs to reduce crime and prevent repeat offenders. Harris is the first female, first African-American, and the first Asian-American attorney general in California. Newsweek calls her one of the most powerful women in America, and she proved it this month when she successfully pushed through a first-of-its-kind homeowner bill of rights. Kamala Harris is already making history. She is called by some observers the female Barack Obama. Okay, can I just put in a request that we stop calling every successful black politician the next Barack Obama, or the female Barack Obama, or the sleeping Barack Obama? Everyone's got their own name, and everyone's got their own story. I mean, like Kamala. Basically, in every job she had, she made history. First black female DA in California, first female and first black attorney general in California, first South Asian senator in all of America which says a lot of great things about her. It also says a lot of not so great things about society. Cause I mean, black women could have been doing these jobs the whole time. You know, it's not like in 2011, black women suddenly got an upgrade that made them fit for office. Oh, hey, they released black woman 3.0. They can be attorney general now. Now, on the one hand, being California's district attorney 20 years ago is what made Kamala Harris a star. But a lot has changed in that 20 years. And some of the things she did at the time are a little less popular with many of today's Democrats. Kamala Harris is defending her record as a prosecutor that some activists see as being pro-law enforcement at the expense of civil rights. Progressives say Harris was not progressive enough, failing to seek justice for the wrongfully imprisoned. Contributing as prosecutor to the mass incarceration of black men. Criticized in a lot of communities for not using the full power of her office to investigate police shootings. Critics are questioning some of her policies, which they say worked against black families, including a crackdown on parents whose children were truant. So I sent a letter out on my letterhead to every parent in the school district. This was a little controversial in San Francisco. <laughs> a friend of mine actually called me and he said, Kamala, my wife got the letter. She freaked out. She brought all the kids into the living room, held up the letter, said, if you don't go to school, Kamala's going to put you and me in jail. Yes, we achieved intended effect. Ah, uh, that's not a good look. Threatening to send parents and their kids to jail for skipping school? I mean, I get that you wanted kids to get an education, but there must have been better ways to keep them in class. Like, why not just tell kids that if they go to school every day, they can get an education? 
that will help them get a good job so that they can advance in society. You know, lie to them. What I really wanna know is, how did this program work? Like, would the parents and kids go to jail together? Like, would they share a jail cell? Would they join the same gang? Would they get matching tattoos? Hello, Will Smith. I've got another idea for a really dope TV show. Hello? Now, to be fair, since Harris was elected to the US Senate in 2016, her views have moved closer to those of modern progressives. She's called for overhauling the prison system, introduced a bail reform bill, and tried to decriminalize weed. But one of the things that has people most excited about seeing Kamala Harris as VP is her long history of grilling Republicans on live national television. California's junior senator is notable both in biography and her two-year tenure in the Senate. Supporters hail Harris's rapid-fire questioning. Senator Harris being possibly the best prosecutor the Senate has ever seen. Can you think of any laws that give government the power to make decisions about uh, the male body? I'm not a... I'm not a thinking of any right now, Senator. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh... Yes or no? Senator, I'm very sensitive about time, and I'd like to have a very lengthy conversation and explain that all to you. I, I tried to do that... Can you give me a yes or no uh, answer, ...in the please? closed briefing. Well, it, it's not a short answer, Senator. The answer it, is... It is either you are willing to well, do that or not. So when they're, where, when they're instructed... Let me once... Excuse Senator. me, I, I'm asking the questions. Can, I do want you to be honest. And I'm not able to uh, be rushed this fast. It makes me nervous. And when I get nervous, I start pooping gold coins. But yeah, Kamala Harris doesn't mess around, man. When she's asking you questions, you're gonna answer those questions. I just hope she knows how to turn it off when she's vice president, you know? She doesn't want to be at a state funeral like, I am so sorry about your husband. Where were you on the night he died? So that's Kamala Harris. Prosecutor, senator, and now VP candidate. And who knows where she'll go from here? I mean, at this rate, one day they might be calling Barack Obama the previous Kamala Harris. Wait, does that make sense?